Welcome back to my channel. This is Stage of Bliss, where we talk about Kundalini awakenings. I've got my morning yogurt, forager. I really like this stuff. And life force management. So let me just start off by saying I am hugely Sagittarius. My North Node is in Sagittarius. I've been a huge seeker all of my life. I've traveled to India and Asia multiple times, studied yoga and meditation and ashram over there, um, studied under teachers and masters and, you know, taught yoga for 12 years and studied all sorts of natural medicine. And uh, I used to work in a health food store a long time ago. Someone asked me to talk about myself in one of the comments, so I'm going to share a little bit. Um, I found that people coming into the health food store way back when I was working as a wellness consultant, that people wanted to just replace their doctor with someone like me, like a health consultant. And I found that I didn't really like how that felt because I'm all about liberation. That's my jam. So um, liberation, empowerment. Um, my, my greatest joy is is empowering other people to heal themselves and find their own path. I just read um, an article this morning of the twin ray cult or something like that and how these people operated. And um, I felt really sad for the people, the followers. And I always felt this way even watching the disciples follow the gurus at yoga school, even though I had my own trip up with that too. where we learn that the, the teacher is within. You know, if you listen to me and something I say resonates with you, that's your inner teacher, that's not me. I have to do these videos. <laughs> I have so much that I've accumulated in my head and in my field. I'm absolutely directed by my inner core to share it and let it out and make it available to you in hopes that it might support you in some way. Otherwise, I will implode, honestly. So, with that being said, take whatever resonates and leave the rest. You know, I'm not up here saying, like, everything I'm going to say today is going to be what you need to hear. Somebody wrote a comment on a video the other day that said, you know, don't make such a, like, a useless video for people to watch or something like that. I'm like... Meh. I mean, you don't have to watch it. But what I have learned is that I've packed enough in here, in this being and in this experience, that it isn't really even me when I get in front of the camera. Like, once I get going, there is some sort of a transmission or a message for you that comes through if you're in that space and you're open, and it really doesn't have a lot to do with stage of bliss. It has a lot to do with the space that I allow um, in and hold for authenticity and empowerment to come through not only for myself but for you. But this is about the journey of self-realization, right? The Kundalini Awakening is a self-realization journey. So that was kind of a long preface intro, but I want to get into the topic today, which is Kundalini and the third chakra and digestive issues. So I guess that was a preface because sometimes it's hard to digest everything, right? It's hard to digest our spiritual experience. That's why they say in the third chakra behind this, not only is there Agni, the fire, but there's also Bhuta Agni, which means the spiritual fire. And the, the third chakra, the solar plexus, is like our inner sun, it's our inner fire. It's um, in the Chinese tradition, the Dantian sits in the navel and above the kidneys and is where we also store energy. So it's known to be like a storage facility for the energy of the body. And so in the raising of Kundalini life force, pardon me, excuse me. Oh my gosh, yo, Kurt burps. Um, there are three locks at the root, at the navel, and at the throat 
that when you're moving the energy, these are locks and pumps that help you kind of lock them in as you're learning to manage and move the energy. Um, so that's what is utilized in the Maha Mudra, the great mudra. You use all three of those locks and breathing in the spine, Ketri Mudra, Shambhavi Mudra, um, to work with the Kundalini and lock it in. Okay, but that's beside the point of today's talk, which I wanted to talk about problems with the digestive system because a lot of people have them and there's a lot of like food allergies or intolerances and stuff that could be related to your Kundalini awakening. Of course, you might have other issues. Seek your medical practitioner. I am a spiritual practitioner. I teach yoga and life force management. I also work in the energy body uh, with uh, your subconscious mind and patterning and so forth like that. And I can teach you how to do that. If you work with me, that's kind of the point. I don't really want to do it all for you. I would love for you to find what I found also, which is, hey, I can do these things on myself and it helps move blocks. And hey, um, if I'm feeling like digestive stuff, a lot of that might just be I'm not digesting what I'm learning. I'm not able to integrate what I'm learning. So this is a big thing. We can learn, 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 but we have to integrate it. In other words, we have to embody it. We have to put it in the physical and act it. And this is where we see a lot of people that say one thing, but do another, right? So if you're, if you're speaking about all these spiritual truths and about, you know, love and harmony and organization or whatever and then you go to the house and it's disorganized and there's chaos and there's fighting and everything this is not fully integrated right and i'm not saying that anyone's perfect and i don't know if you can get fully integrated in this life because that might just be going to the next place um, as one of my teachers once said but I do believe you can get to a place where you're more able to digest your experiences. And working with third chakra exercises and practices can be really helpful. I have to tell you, uh, one of my experiences as I had like terrible gut problems, it's hard for me to even say this now because I can barely remember it <laughs> because it's been gone ever since I did this practice. But when I first went to yoga school, and that was in... 20, 25, 25, 26, uh, not 25, 2005, 2006, sorry, we're not even in 2025. <laughs> I went to yoga school next year. I have like a red eye today. I did not sleep very early last night. I stayed up too late. Um, got up to take my boy to school. Then I went to this relaxation center this morning, which I just got um, this membership to try and they have all these like med beds and stuff um, red light therapy and infrared and this lymph machine and stuff so I went and did like an hour of that this morning and I, I can definitely feel my body like trying to digest that experience so part of my physical is uh, you know I didn't super sleep great but anyway um, so I went to yoga school 2005, 2006. And before that, I had really bad digestive system. In fact, I just thought it was normal because my dad had bad digestive stuff. And I just thought it probably runs in the family. This was the way I was thinking back then. Um, but we started practicing yoga nidra, which I do have some yoga nidra meditations free on this channel under the yoga and meditation playlist. Or you can go to my uh, site, blissme.passion.io where I have a whole bunch of my courses. One of them is conscious sleep practice, yoga nature, conscious sleep practice. And you can take that course and you can learn how to facilitate yoga nidra either in your practice and your work, or, you know, you can record some for yourself because you can't really give it to yourself unless it's on a recording. But anyway, try out some of the free ones. They told me, you know, whatever you want to shift in yourself it's going back into the subconscious mind and it's shifting it um, from a deep place it's a pratyahar practice so this helps you to withdraw the senses by first filling the senses so that's a practice of pratyahar uh, withdrawing the senses preparing for deeper inner work so in this 
particular practice, you go in and you are re, you're pulling stuff out of the subconscious mind. So there's like a point of the practice where different words are just being said and like you make mental associations. And so your subconscious mind will mentally associate and it's almost like it's because you go into alpha brain waves, you start to pull these things out. Well, I put in my digestive system works perfectly. My digestive system works perfectly because you put an affirmation, a sankalpa, a resolve at the beginning, and you repeat this resolve every time you practice. So we did this every day, and I think it was two weeks of daily practice, so you gotta be consistent. Um, and then at the end of the two weeks, which we did it every day of school for like five months, um, at the end of the two weeks, I remember, or after two weeks, I was like, I don't remember what I am trying to heal. Um, then I, it came to me on my digestive system, and all of a sudden I realized my digestive system is working perfectly. I'm not having any problems. And mind you, I was in India. <laughs> There's lots of digestive, gurgly, weirdness stuff there. But I traveled to India again after that. No. I did go back, uh, did I go back one more time after that? I've been to India three different times. Uh, one was yoga school, uh, the years are all boggled. But anyway, like traveling to India was always kind of a weird digestive issue. But um, again, like I never have had problems with my digestive system since. I've never had any food allergies or anything since. I've never had any problems with gut stuff since. And anytime I feel weird stuff in my stomach, I know that I am processing information. And um, I do some yoga practices, uh, some of which you can find on this channel. Uh, Kapalbhati breathing is one that is a breath of fire. So you're just pulsing your belly. <sighs> And you can't see my belly right now, but pulsing the belly is one way. You can also do one where you've got your fists together and you basically lay on those and take some deep breaths where you're laying on your belly. That can help reset solar plexus. The mantra for the belly, for the navel, is Ram, R-A-M, Ram, Ram. Ram, and it's not really Ram, it's Ram, Ram. If you want to learn mantra, I have Make Mantra Your Medicine six month course that I can send you if that interests you at all. But mantras are phenomenal practices. I have found so much shift in my life from using mantra, and I used to think it was kind of weird or cultish before. <laughs> but I absolutely love them. They have opened up my voice. They have helped me to access a deeper part of me. They have changed my DNA. I am certain of it. Uh, one last little story for you here on that, and then I'll just end with a couple more belly practices. I'm not really like sticking on the subject of the digestive system. I recognize that. And maybe this is a practice for you uh, to digest everything that I'm saying and pick the pieces that you want. See, your, our consciousness is like the digestive system in that the, our body doesn't take everything we eat and use it because we poop and pee, right? I mean, there is waste products. So there's some stuff that we eat that the body's like, nope. <laughs> and it just straight up packages that stuff out and lets it go. Well, everything you take in should be that way. Everything you hear, what I'm saying, other people are saying, what's going on in the world, you know, even opportunities coming. Sometimes you're just like, oh, only this part and I'm going to discard the rest. You know, this fits with where I'm going right now. I'm discarding the rest. So we learn to use that digestive capacity in our consciousness. And that's literally what the chakras are. They're, they're aspects of our consciousness, psychic centers. Our psyche is we think it's just here, but it's actually in all these centers, right? So our digestive psychic center deals with digesting information and ideas. And if we feel it in our gut, we feel weird or feel nauseous or feel reactive to foods. One place to check is how am I digesting everything? Because it can be a lot, right? And sometimes we just need to take a break and like disconnect from everything we're doing. Even if we're on a really tight schedule, sometimes just taking a day off of everything and letting it go actually is super helpful. 
super helpful in the digestive system, like going, oh, 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 I know what I need out of that. And boom, like if I do something, boom, 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 every day, every day, every day, and then I take a day off or two days off or three days off, and then I come back to it, I'm suddenly like more genius in that thing <laughs> because that time away, just like your break in between poses in yoga is the alchemical moment. The break between doing things is the digestive integrative moment. So digestive system, you know, it doesn't want you to swim or run right after you eat because it needs that still moment to pull the nutrients out, right? So even maybe after listening to something like this or any other thing you learn, maybe you just take a moment with it and be with it and just sit in quiet. I'll give you one more practice and then I'll make this video end. <laughs> um, sometimes we feel the gook in the gut. We just don't feel good in the gut. And like I immediately always think that things are spiritual and psychic first. And if we don't understand them and work with them, they become more mental and then they become more emotional and then they become like part of our like labor, our breathing and our physicality and our biology. And then they become super physical and they can manifest as physical things. Um, so if we catch it in this ethereal space and we do the work there, we can prevent, you know, something dense and physical manifesting like an ulcer or, you know, colitis or something like that and if those things have manifested it is good to trace them back to their ethereal component um, which is something the medical industry does not look at that is so important and why uh, a lot of people are turning to more natural medicines and spirituality and stuff because there is all these components. But so if you feel something in your stomach and you're just like, oh, I don't feel good after seeing that person or after being that place or eating that food, I first imagine in my gut that it's just black. Like whatever that is, that toxin or that gook or that heavy emotion, it's black. And then I imagine it start turning clockwise like it's a washing machine. You know, you can see the washing machine windows and it's all dirty and you see like the gray dirty water. So I just imagine like moving my belly like from black to gray and to light gray and all the way to white until I feel it white in my belly and bright like a light. And this actually works really well. And I do this often. <laughs> and this was something one of my teachers taught me, Almin, she used to talk about moving psychic energy through the belly. A uh, really cool practice. Try it. See if it works for you. Otherwise, again, Ram, the, the mantra, is really helpful to stimulate that psychic center of the gut, which, again, can help us digest um, experiences and even physical stuff, right? Um, the Kapalvati breathing. <laughs> Not if you have food in your stomach, please. And I do have a video on this channel that is the Pumpa breath. I'll double check to make sure it's there, but I'm outside and I'm you know, doing a breathing practice with the sun. It's a heavy breathing practice. And then you do this and you spit all the air out and then you massage your belly. Really awesome practice too for gut stuff. So strong that they've even found it can kill parasites. Really cool. So anyway, that was a couple more practices, I guess I'm just reviewing. Um, and then yoga nidra also, which is a passive practice that can work with some of the subconscious entanglements around that. But even just knowing that maybe my stomach stuff or my like digestive problems might have to do with me not digesting all my experiences right, that alone is an empowering thought, yeah? That's using tantra in our life. That's liberating our mind to a new idea about something. Uh, that's my favorite thing. Like when we can get a new idea about something that changes the whole thing and our response to it. Thank you for being here so much. I really appreciate you. I love you so much. I 
I appreciate your feedback. Thank you so much for any comments that you leave, positive or crit critical. I love it all. It helps me to offer a better service to you here. And if there's anything I can do for you individually, I do leave my website and my email below. You know, I do sessions. If you want to just meet me and do a reading by donation, those are always fun. I pull out the runes and I pull out the I Ching and the tarot and the oracle cards and we just have a chitty chat and see what the universe has got in store. And, you know, if you don't buy into it or whatever, it's fine, you know, like, uh, but I do bring up some of the other things that I do. So if you want to just see how I work, that's a really fun way to get to know me and me get to know you. And um, I love that because this way I'm only just talking at you and to you and I'm trying to feel, feel you through the screen. <laughs> okay. I will see you tomorrow. And much love to you and namaste.